Okay, I think we can go ahead and start. Okay, uh, hi everyone. So today I'll give you a brief overview of um, machine reading comprehension. So the models that, so I'll, I'll talk about some data sets and also some models, but the models will mainly be of the old, will be the older ones. So before Bert came and wrecked everyone. Yeah. So why do we need machine reading comprehension? The reason is that because now we have this information explosion, right? And there's so many, there's so much information and documents everywhere. But uh, our schedules and attentions are very limited. So we can't possibly, like if we want to know about some piece of information, we can't possibly be searching through all the documents that we have, let's say in like, a, let's say we have a huge Google Drive or something like an organizational Google Drive, like our wing drive. And we want to know about some piece or some particular piece of information. We can't just go and search through all the documents in the drive to find it. So having a system that can uh, understand all these documents and answer our questions is basically the motivation for MRC and QA. Yeah, and I think a very relevant example to our situation now is this. There's this uh, COVID open research challenge where, yeah, so, so it's like a question answering challenge where um, they ask you to build a model that can tell you more about like, let's say common symptoms of COVID or what you should do to prevent yourself from getting COVID. Yeah. So based on the documents, the scientific documents or let's say documents published by the government that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that that's in the data set or the knowledge base and the system can answer these common questions. Yeah, so for NRC, the task is defined this way. So given a query, queue and a context. So this context can be a passage or a document or yeah, it's just generally some piece of unstructured text information. We want to we want the system to predict a response that we call A. So there are two main types of QA. One is extractive, which is basically predicting a text span. So let's say given a, a document, you say at this index, this is the start of the span and then predict another index, which is the end of the span. And that span basically is the answer to the query. And the other type of question answering is, or MRC is uh, generative or conversational. So in this case, the exact answer may not be in the text itself. So in, the, in this case, you will have to generate the answers from your vocabulary. Yeah, so some common data sets uh, some very popular data sets include the CNN, Daily Mail data set. So these are gathered. So these are passages from uh, CNN and Daily Mail articles. And how they, so this is kind of different from our modern QA. This is, uh, so what they do is they, the context are the passages, but the questions are not like a, a question where I, I ask you like, what is the color of Apple or something. Yeah, but the questions are more like they call close style. So they give you a sentence and they blank out, let's say, a word and say, ask the machine to predict what is this word. So this, these questions are actually constructed from the bullet point summaries that these articles tend to come with. Yeah, so in, in this case, it's kind of like a, you can think of the summaries as a different phrasing of the passage and, and uh, like a condensed representation of the passage as well. And another popular data set is the squad data set, Stanford question answering data set. And this is built from Wikipedia passages. So this, uh, most of the time when someone develops a QA or MRC system, these days they were tested on squat at least. So it's one of like the popular baseline or popular benchmarks. 
So there are two versions of this data set. The first one was released in 2016 and it was like basically your uh, WH questions like who, what, where, when, how kind of questions. And this version of the data set guarantees that the answers can be found in the context. So, so the, the context is not like all the passages from Wikipedia, but like one particular passage from Wikipedia. So in, in this case, it's kind of, diff it, it's like a simpler version of the problem where you want to ask like an entire knowledge base a question. Yeah. So in, in this, in the first version, the pet, the context definitely contains the answers. Whereas in the version two, they also add like unanswerable questions where the, let's say, so how they do this is like they change some of the entities in the questions to some entity from another context. So in this case, they say the question is unanswerable. So the, so it's, it, it makes the task harder because the machine has to know when the question is unanswerable. Whereas before that, it always, it knows that the, un, the, the questions always have answers. Yeah. Uh, so another data set is called MS Marco. So it's also a machine reading data set. And, the con and this is slightly different from Squat. And they say it's a harder version of, it's a much harder task because you, it's not, it's, it's not guaranteed that the, the context contain answers to the questions because the questions are like Bing queries and, and it's by Microsoft. That's why they're using Bing. And the contexts are just web articles that have been indexed by Bing for this particular query. Yeah. So it's not guaranteed that the answers are inside those contexts. Okay, yes, I think there's uh, one problem. There's two microphones that are on, so we have to check out which other cool. microphone is on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mine's definitely not. I have no Okay, anyway, do you try to go ahead and okay. try to listen to the video? Uh, the, yeah, okay. So the last data set on this list is, uh, top trivia QA. And, uh, so the con, this one, did someone say something? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so the context for trivia QA are basically like Wikipedia and web articles that are gathered based on the questions and the questions they, they kind of reuse trivia questions from those like trivia websites. Like they, they are like, it's kind of like Jeopardy, I guess. Yeah. Jeopardy? Jeopardy, Jeopardy. The, the, Jeopardy. Uh, the, the IBM. The IBM show, yeah. It, what was it? Watson, right? Mm -hmm. IBM Watson. Yeah, IBM Watson. Yeah, so, so these are hmm. some of the popular data sets. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's look at some of the models now. Um, so for, for this model, so for the next two models, they are from the same paper. And it's also the paper that introduced the CNN Daily Mail data set. So this is a very early uh, QA model. So it's very rudimentary and I think like you can probably immediately understand what is going on from this picture because it's basically just a bunch of by just two by LSTMs with attention and they encode the by LSTM with they encode the query and the document using the by LSTM and then they just sum them. Yeah, then that's that's the representation and they use that to do queuing. So they, they call this the attentive reader. You guys have any questions yet? So this is a pretty famous baseline. I think many of you knew it already, right? Uh, yeah. You're going to talk more about how it works. Um, 
well, this is just basically how it works. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think on the right hand side you have the question right? who will be doing that? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. On the uh, left hand side. Yeah. You so have left hand the side is the document or the document. context. Is this the Stanford attention reader? Yeah, it's uh, an attention reader. Okay. Is it by Stanford? Is it? Oh, it's by DeepMind. No, it's by DeepMind and Oxford. So what is S2 right here? What is S2 right here? Oh, hi. Oh, is this a, it's just a good. Uh, hi, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, is, is this for the generative or for the extractive uh, QA? Mm, I believe extractive because yeah. it's just a, so, so this is the, the close, the close type of question. Mm -hmm. So just mask out one word and then they ask you to predict, ask the model to predict what word this is. Oh, okay. So, uh, which means they're just, have some some classification layers on the on the encodings right to, to break for some some set yeah. of existing words i see okay. yeah, I believe, yeah i believe it's just a it's just an extractive kind of mm. I mean, extractive kind of task okay mm. yeah other questions Yeah, so the next, so they, they propose another model they call the impatient reader. So it's similar to attentive reader, but then like the previous one, they, they encode everything. They encode the entire query and the entire document. Then they just add them together, right? But for this one, at each, at each, uh, so what they do is, when they pass or rather when they read each query, each token of the query, they attend to the entire document. And then after that, yeah, so so each of this is like the the attention for, for this query. So this is the attention for this query. And then this is the attention for this token in the query. And this is the attention for this token in the query. And then after that, they, they also do the same thing. What do you mean do the same thing? Like they, they sum it together. Okay. Well, why is the model called impatient reader? Like, uh, what is it uh, the impatient about? Oh, because, so, so the previous one, it reads the whole thing first. Like, the, yeah. it reads the whole question first, right? And then you, it attends to the entire document. Whereas this one, it, it's kind of reading the whole document for each token in the query, Which that's why it's impatient. But actually, as I see the model, you have the on the left hand side you are attending uh, all the all the facts for all the fact tokens and the one token from the question token, like, like the X. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm not sure what this is about because if you are if you are attending to both input uh, both the fact and the question, where is there mm -hmm. only one token of the question attended? Uh, so, oh, so I think, so this, all these lines are actually the same as oh, these okay. lines. They, oh, they, so yeah, they just draw lines, it differently. Okay. Yeah, they just draw it differently. Okay. So they're just indicating, uh, I guess. The attention scores. Maybe. Yeah, not, not so much the attention score, like the, what, what, what the, the arrows represent, yeah. right? So I guess the, it's to make it neater, otherwise it'd just be a big mess of arrows. <laughs> Can't see anything. Right. Okay. What do you do? Which one? So like it's taking the the first part of facts and then the last part of England. Yeah, so because so this Oh it's just the okay I yeah, see. It's it the but it's the biology. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So this represents the whole question. Yeah, yeah I see. <laughs> there was a question on, on uh Zoom. Oh on Zoom. Anyone has something that you'd like to say? Yeah, 
I don't see any hands up. Go ahead. Okay. I should have another time. question. Yes. Yeah. So at the end, you have uh, this output G. So what is the exact form of your output? Because for reading comprehension, you, you're basically doing uh, like a sequence labeling job. Mm -hmm. You label each token to be that like, either it's an it's answer or it's not an answer. But uh, for this model, it doesn't seem like to be a, doesn't seem like a sequence labeling. It seems like you are, you are directly output a token. So I think we're trying to predict X in this case. So, so you are outputting just one word. Yeah. yeah. So, what, what, what if the people's name have two words, like uh, Mary Angela? So you can only <laughs> um, output one word. I guess then they just because that's in the in the masking, right? Yeah. So I just, guess maybe they're doing X Y. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So no, I think they just they probably just mask one word because all in all their examples they only have one word. Oh. They only mask oh. one word in all their examples. Oh, oh so that's. Uh, Oh, so the, 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 both the question and the fact that I extracted from the same document. So, so X is the mask. Right? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so. yeah. 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 So the so oh. the question, the the question is basically like the bullet point. Like you know, when you read a news article, sometimes they have some they have like a like a bullet points of what is the TLDR of the article. Right? This is on the squad. No, this is CNN daily. Uh, okay, in CNN daily, I think that they, they have bullet points yeah. uh, which summarizes so the nice. article, and then uh, uh, oh, so so you, so on the right hand side is a summary, and on the left hand side you have the like, you mean in the article? Yeah, no, no, no. In the, your, your input, your input. You only have two part in your, your mm -hmm. input, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so first part the summary, and then oh, your master okay. summary. Yeah. So although I, I saw this model using square as well, so in that case the output changes yeah. and you just output yeah. the starting and ending index. Yeah. Which is like find the span in the yeah. So it's not a six day it's uh, Yeah, so it changes according to the data set. But probably the architecture stays the same. Just the output changes. Yeah, okay. So let me send an article in the example. You can put it on Slack. I took the one paragraph out of the the paper. Oh. Yeah, so so if you look at the article that I sent, right? They, they at the top of the at the top of the article there is this bunch of bullet points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so these so these are the questions in that sense. So so they get the questions by masking out a certain word in these bullet points. Yeah, so the model, so, so, maybe let's say you can show that on your screen so that people on the yeah. recording can see what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so here you can see one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think I possess the sake of this class. It's really <laughs> okay, but well you get the idea, right? There's a, a bunch of bullet points. Yeah. There. So, so they form the questions by masking out. Let's say US, then they say X now has the most coronavirus cases. So then they ask you predict X. So you're only masking one word and this one. Yeah. Okay. It seems to be just masking on it. How do I go back to that? <laughs> 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 Define the zoom in the You know how to change um, the application. Stand by, we have two CSPHD <laughs> students having technical difficulties with their laptops. <laughs> I think it was here in a view. It was in the, in the, the one with Chrome. Go back to your oh, I have Chrome. 
Are you on Firefox? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. there we go. Yay. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so the next the next paper is called Dynamic Co-Attention Networks. So so basically there are two key components in this paper. Uh, one is they call co-attention encoder and one they call dynamic pointing decoder. And basically these are LSTM. So the so the encoder is uh, some LSTMs. And they, they use the same LSTM to encode both the question and the document. So they, they say that this is because they will they can share representational power. So like same model. Because it's using the same model. And they kind of sep they kind of try to introduce a separation in the question and document space by adding a non-linearity by on the, for the for the question when they encode the questions, yeah. so, if, if you have any comments on how this works, no. These are from your coworkers. Yeah. yeah. This is a Salesforce. <laughs> yeah, it's a Salesforce. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, so this is how the the co-attention encoder works. So it, this document is the question. So each of these bars are actually vectors. So, so each vector, so you can think of the each each vector is like a token in the in the document or the question. Each vector is a token. I yeah. thought it says m plus one document there. Wait. Wait, wait. That's the whole. I mean, so over here it says m plus one document. So oh. I just want to make sure that. It's, Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> Let me see the paper. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the paper on page, what is it? I'll put the paper URL. I mean, I know you guys put it already. Uh, uh, I'll put it on, on Slack just so that you guys have a timestamp for it. Uh, so if you look at figure one there, it does give you some information for that. Uh, uh, what, what, what is it? L. Is it M documents and M questions and for every question it depends over all the documents? Yeah, I guess maybe it's uh, maybe it's M documents and not. And what is L? L is the length of the vector. Right? Yeah, I guess L is the length of the, the length of the sequence. Capital L is the infinity. There's a capital yeah, there's a capital L, but there's no small. Let's see what does it say in the document? Somewhere yeah, go ahead. Did someone want to say something? I, I heard some background. They actually didn't tell you what script L stands for. I guess it's implied. I think it's the length of the embedding. Possibly. Length of the encoding. So I, I don't know. I think it's either the length of the encoding or the length of the sequence. Mm. So yeah, it depends on what the. So if it's. Oh, so if these are m dot plus one documents, then. Then I guess L is the length of the sequence for so each document. Yeah, each document. Yeah, I think you're right. L looks like the embedding length. Because if I look at section 2.1 in the, the source document that I just pasted, I'll just paste it again. Um, it does seem to imply that. So 
that says, uh, you know, let a bunch of uh, vectors denote the sequence of word vectors and sync the documents. We use the LSTM to encode it into a matrix of dimensions L times M plus one. So M plus one is the documents. Mm -hmm. L must be the embedding language, right? Yeah, so, yeah, so, so. So you have basically one vector per document, right? Mm, wait, but because it, they say it says uh, these so these are words in the document, right? So M is the size of the document. M would be the so M would be the size of the document, right? And N is the size of the question. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. So this whole thing is one question, and this whole thing is one document. Okay. And so these are like words in the document. And what's in the question? Yeah, yeah, you are yeah. right. It's not multiple documents. Yeah. Sorry. It's one document. Yeah. Oh, it's a document. Yeah. It's a single and document. Plus plus one. Yeah. So, so the, the document is blank and plus one. So, so every three. every question in the word will attend to every yeah. every word in the question will attend to every word in the document. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. the document also yeah. does yeah. So, yeah. so, so that's what the A D and A Q are. It's like the Attention from the document, the query, and the query of the document. And so the How only is of the length m plus one cross what? m plus one is it? What? What is it? So AD is of the size m plus one cross m plus one. Yeah. A, so yeah, there's a another matrix plus. that they've defined, which is the L matrix, uh -huh. right? Which is this um um e, Q. Yeah. So yeah. so that's why they they they, they use different lengths in the picture so you can see uh, yeah. yeah so this is three so three by five and this is five by three uh, yeah. and they take the product of uh, so they take a product of this attention matrix and the document so the so cq is b times a where is CQ? CQ, CQ is this, this the product. Oh, um, wow, it's like, it's like a, it's like an electric, electric circuit. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit complicated, but basically, from what you can read in 2.2, .2, right, they have this affinity matrix, which is basically the interaction between the document and the question. Uh -huh. Then they do, uh, Normalization with respect to either the question or the document to get this, uh, this, uh, either this uh, document normalized or the query normalized uh, matrices, right? And then they're um, doing the, the product to get this CQ, right? That's the bottom of uh, page two. They tell you what the formula of the CQ is. It's yeah, just so the document yeah. times the query matrix, and then you have the reverse. Or the other one, the CD, right? So you have these two matrices, um, which are getting from that, right? So CQ here. This is just uh, from the paper, CQA. Yeah, so it's on the right side. So why would you want to do this? Oh yeah, right over there. Why would you want to do this? Which one? It's all these like cross attentions, co attentions. So I guess the. I guess they're saying that having like having the having attentions from both sides is better than one. Because like previously we the one we saw is just one so attention from uh, well, I think Bidef was already doing that. Yeah, so Bidef has a similar it's a similar they, yeah. so they were both published at the same conference at the same time. But isn't, <laughs> isn't Bidef 2016? No, so that's the archive paper. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it, they are both at ICR in mm. twenty seventeen. I wonder which one's better. <laughs> <laughs> They're almost the same. Yeah. Yeah. So it probably won't matter so much. Well, actually, I have to take that back. <laughs> There's a lot of really small things that don't seem to matter a lot, which matter a lot. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Yeah. So both. So both of them. So the both papers are using this. Attention from query document and document to query. Yeah. So and so because you can they, they use different sizes here you can see 
So this gives you this gives you this, and then they concatenate it. The question. Then similarly for this. Yeah. And yeah. And then you get this. <laughs> it makes sense to me though. Like um, since Abner was asking, so like even myself when I have like in the high school had these mm. questions and uh, the passages, I used to do it in both ways, like mm -hmm. first question and all the like, uh, options and mm -hmm. then maybe one option and read the question again. Like I used mm -hmm. to iterate both ways. So oh, it's kind of intuitional to, that they do this. Yeah, I'm just wondering why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically I cannot explain, <laughs> but <laughs> intuitionally it makes sense. Yeah. So I, I guess maybe it, I guess it works. That's why my lab was a mm. very strong baseline for quite a while. Yeah, and so because these are like uh, they, 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 there's no temporal information, so then they put it through uh, by LSTM to get it to represent the temporal. Information. So, but by principle, CQ is the encoding of the question, right? Mm -hmm. oh, no, of the document. Mm -hmm. And uh, CD is the encoding of C the question. C but done in a very pipeline manner. CQ is the, so they say it's the attention context of the document in light of each word. Yeah, so DAQ, so you are embedding the document considering the attention over the questions. Yeah. Wait, right. wait is it? Or is it the other way? Around? I think CQ is the dialogue. Is the document? Although it's CQ. So AQ is the attention rate side right? for the questions. Yeah, so. Yeah. And D is the document, which is a presentation of the document. Yeah. So you're using the attention and getting the the presentation of the document. Then cross and press one. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Or is it? Oh, no, no, no. It's the other way around. Is it? That's very confusing. Right, which one? I, <laughs> so, I was so, looking at another paper. So CQ. They See, they're all is... competing for attention. This other paper is called pay more attention. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know where to concentrate. I've got too many pointer networks pointing all over the place. Yeah, so CQ is B A Q. Right? So B a and Q. Yeah. A Q is actually the attention which is calculated. And normalized for the question. Right. Normalized for the question. But for the question, do you mean each dialogue tokens attention to each other question or the other way around? Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I, I was I wasn't very clear on that. Okay. And it's not very clear in the by that paper idea. So, <laughs> well, you can take a look by analyzing the dimensions of a q and, and uh, yeah, a, right, a yeah, uh, what a b, right? So they yeah. do tell you that a q has the dimensions of m plus one times n plus one, and then uh, a b is the other way around. Yeah, yeah. So what sums to one then? Something should sum to one. The row sum to one. For for AQ, they say it is uh, row normalized. Uh, so it is row summing to one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, I'll, so I don't know. Yeah. Then it's I will go to tokens attention to questions. Copy that into there. So, for example, the first row is, yeah, yeah. says like how yeah. the first token in dialogue is attending to each All the question other words. question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, it keeps attending, okay. Yeah, I put that section of 2.2 .2 into the Slack as a reply to the 2.1 section. So uh, I don't mess up the threads. But then CQ is actually the dialogue context, right? It should be the yeah, dialogue question. But I mean, the question or the document? Document. Document, oh. yeah, not dialogue. No, uh, so yeah, sorry. Now <laughs> role normalization means Normalized over rows, or are they meaning? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's questionable, right? So, is it normalized like this? Mm -hmm. Sum up to yeah, one, or this sums up to one? Question. Because <laughs> this suggests that it is sums up to one like this. 
I hope they don't need thoughts to mention it because you then it'll sum up to one like this. I don't know whether that is so normalized. Yeah, I know that. Either. Yeah, because if you know if the if it is normalized like this, then if you multiply if you're using this attention with D, then it should be the representation yeah. of D. Yeah. But let's yeah. say it is CQ. Yeah, I think. So you have this question, right? Is it normalized yeah. this way, or uh, perhaps it's normalized the other way, right? Yeah. So what 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 do they mean by normal? Yeah. Okay. Because you can never trust these people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can look at the code. Yeah, you know, the code is always the most telling part, right? Yeah. So but it seems cool. like both both the the DC and and BIDAP are doing the same type of normalization. Uh, so if you know how BIDAP works, it's the same. Because there's another paper that I put in Slack, which is uh, supposedly, I mean. Kaha asked this question, and so somebody already did the experiments. Which one is better? And, and so okay. they created a hybrid. They have a hybrid architecture. Um, hybrid by that co-attention new model, double cross attention new model. Um, yeah, and that's the yeah. other paper. But yeah. well, how, how could they do this if they happen to publish at the same time? I guess it was on archive, then oh. it was added in either before or after. Yeah, if you want to see more confusing uh, network architectures with lots of matrices and tensors, uh, I'm pasting one on that other paper. So that oh, one yeah. is uh, pretty, pretty, pretty uh, well, it makes a lot of sense too. It's not that scary. Uh, that's probably a better diagram because it at least gives you a better idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right, they, they use the word context in, in that paper rather than just a document. Okay, we got lots of questions. So uh, scribes have the unfortunate or fortunate um, responsibility to make it clear what was actually meant. So uh, you guys can, uh, uh, Huang and, and Kaha can work on that to see whether they can get an answer for the group. Wow. Pay more attention is interesting. <laughs> yeah, so you can look at that if you want. Uh, I mean, it's on the, I put it on the Slack chat. It's also a Stanford paper. It's so it is? Yeah. Isn't it like a career? But they're, uh, you know, I think they're the whole Stanford students. So Okay. Yeah, so that was the <laughs> encoder. Now we have the decoder, which is also somewhat complex. So the so the the, the decoder they the so the the decoding is done in a iterative form. So it's kinda of like they do it they 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 re refine they do a prediction first and then they kind of refine that prediction based on the previous predictions so so this lstm here represents like the kind of the prediction the state of the prediction it, yeah so the, the hidden so the hidden state of the lstm represents the previous predictions that were that will meet so then based on this hidden state, when it goes to the so like go, when it goes to the next time set, it does another prediction using taking the hidden state into account. So it's kind of like a iterative, so they call it iterative prediction. Is that clear? Kinda. <laughs> okay. You explain it one more time, then the Taha will be able to decode it better. Right? <laughs> <laughs> It's supposed to be iterative understanding. Too. I mean, you're doing the decoding process. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what the so the so the blue and red basically represents like the start and the end prediction, the start and end span, uh, the start and end position prediction.
so 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 what what this network these two networks take in is like the yield from the previous slide so the encoding of the encoding of all the attentions from the document to query and query to document and so within each of these blue and red boxes is this thing they call a highway max out network and i'm not exactly clear what it is <laughs> so do you guys want to discuss that what yeah. is highway max out network <laughs> We can have a discussion on that. So I'm not very clear, like what, how this thing works. Do you guys know what max out is? No. Is it max out green? Uh, it's it's not really. It's a little bit like a variant of a soft max. I I forgot oh. exactly what it does. Uh, let's go check it out. A highway network. You guys are familiar with? Yeah. Or not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell me what a highway network is. It's like uh, the really, really, really. It's, uh, yeah. It's like the rest max. It's yeah. another yeah. version of. Yeah, so what's the difference? Is, yeah, it provides the, uh, it is more general than the ResNet. ResNet is just to, uh, the, the next layer's output is the, uh, is fx plus x, right? But, but uh, the highway network provides more general version. It is a uh, uh, gfx plus hx. It's uh, uh, like to do some transformations to the x uh, and then do there's some other transformations for the uh, previous output. Oh, so basically, instead of summing the input with the transformation, you sum two transformations. Yes, yes. That, so that's you, the you add a, another function node yeah. that allows you to do some transformation before it sums together. Right. So at least uh, someone said that uh, these two are uh, basically equivalent in practice because uh, uh, it is uh, somehow uh, somewhat not necessary to, to to add this uh, kind of transformation to a you know. Was it highway networks from anywhere? I'm not sure. So. The faculty of engineering, what? where what? every network, every layer is connected to every other layer in the forward direction. Yeah, I mean, all the residual networks are trying to capture. That's yeah, right. They're saying it. that you know you can ah, learn everything. Right. Oh, okay. And and you just uh, pull pull down the identity function from the previous layer. Right? Ah, okay. Yeah. So you can have the residual. Residuals are usually just connected to the previous layer, right? But you can have any of the, uh, I guess, what, 10 factorial? Is that right? Yeah. 10 factorial linkages between yeah. previous layers. Yeah. All right. And then uh, Liangming is just clarifying, you know, residual networks are, are somehow a, a specific uh, subcase of uh, highway networks. Highway networks have that, another transformation node, right? And Shenting and I both put um, yeah uh, links to max out. Uh, Shenting put one from uh, from cross validated, uh, which has a lot of text, but uh, it's pretty simple. It, it's just a yeah taking the maximum of several functions um, as output. So you can just think of it in the, as uh, another activation function. Oh. Why that particular? Uh, Activation function is used with the highway network. I'm not that clear. Probably it says in the document why. Okay. Oh, so it's taking the. So it's kind of. Okay, so it's different from the soft link. It's a. It's a max of several different types of radius yeah. or something like that. You have more than one activation function and you just take whichever one gives you the most in the output. Yeah. So uh, uh, from the paper, it looks like they're just basing it on strong empirical performance. So they don't have a specific theoretical reason why they're using this for their decoder. They're just saying, hey, it seems to work, so we're <laughs> going to use it. So um, yeah, um, mm -hmm. OK. So, so the, the paper also says the intuition for this is that is it, uh, many different question types and document topics so then like there are different maybe you need different models for each of these question types of topics mm -hmm. so then i guess you're taking the max or <laughs> the max or, or like it's kind of i guess like an ensemble within the network yeah and then you just get the best yeah so you have different activation functions i guess what they're saying is you know uh you 
maybe different activation functions work better for different question types and locking the right? That's what they're saying. So I hope they did some ablation study to show that that's actually the case, but I, I'm not sure. Yeah. So shall we go to? Um, so we've said the previous predictions are affected by the current state, right? Do we do? No, the current the current prediction is affected by the previous predictions. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I just understood. So it's like an iterative. So the yeah. So it kind of gets refined over time. Mm -hmm. So actually, they did some model ablation. So if you go further down into let's see, what is it, page eight of their paper, uh, and I'll paste it on Slack as well. Uh, they have one one part where they used a two-layer multi-layer perceptron instead of the in the highway Markov network, max out network. Yeah. Too many ends. Um, yeah, and they say that's helped. I guess again, this is just empirical performance. They didn't, like most CLR papers, they didn't bother to examine the actual underlying data. Um, yeah. Oh, is it a thing? No, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the papers are so short, right? You only have like eight pages. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't really say a whole lot um, because people are chasing empirical performance rather than trying to understand what's going on. Uh, that, that is always a problem. Yeah, so I guess it's only a difference of one F1 point actually between the MLP and the 16 pool size <laughs> max up network. And it's only on that book. It's uh, like the yeah, difference between an iPhone X and an iPhone XR. I see the iPhone 10 uh, XR is cheaper. It's cheaper, yeah. <laughs> and you know, Apple has bothered to explain what's the difference. <laughs> it's like getting those things without any difference in features, but having a price tag, right? That's what it's like. But the iPhone X have two cameras. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you might be able to inspect it, you know, visually, uh, but yeah. 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 I, I propose we name our next network after like iPhone products. <laughs> I, iPhone or something. And we make similar presentation on the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys can dress up like Steve Jobs. You know, <laughs> blue jeans and, and uh, black shirts. Yeah. Except, of course, blue jeans in Singapore are a lot more expensive than yeah. in the States. Yeah. Okay. Shall we go to the next? Buy that. Okay, back to buy that. Yeah, so, okay, buy that. So, the key idea. <laughs> of BIDEF is the bidirectional attention. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, I can't think of how to raise it better. <laughs> so perhaps you should have done this one first. This is a little easier to understand, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, you it's, know, a, it's the same, right, actually. Like this can't be compared to this thing well, here. No, exactly the same, but the... It's the yeah. same. I mean, mm. the idea is yeah, the pipeline is a little bit different, right? So yeah. if you look at the DCN, right, the one that you showed earlier, uh, the pipeline about how these things get computed is in different order. Like the C, CQ and the CD are computed, uh, uh, what, sequentially, one after another, right? Yeah. They're, they're mm. one after the other. Whereas in BIDAP, they're sort of independently calculated, right? Oh, where is it? Yeah. For sure, BIDAP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they're not. They're computed separately, right? They're not uh, chained one after the other. Actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this diagram doesn't really show. Yeah, but I think the whole model of BIDAP is like you just make it, you know, treat this the two objects, the, mm. the document or whatever, the context and the query as, uh, as two parallel sources of information, right? Yeah. Uh, they have the same level of significance in their framework, right? Yeah, I think so. I think the if you look closely, the orange arrows are the query to context. It's the query to context. And the green arrows are the context to query. So and then 
also as once and they also have the character and then addition to the last one. Uh, uh, oh no but the character embedding is before that mm, yeah before but yeah, yeah these think... are both common to both architectures right oh, this big layer at the, the bottom one. did they have character embeddings in, in the so. dcn i don't think they i don't do. think okay. so because i think it was just words okay so maybe they're missing this box over here yeah, yeah. but that, that's just one line of python code right yeah. yeah, it's just concatenated, right? And maybe so a just couple more tons of carbon for training. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, so, they re, so if they really, so when they added Elmo, they just, what, they just concatenated it on. So they added three. So they had three here, instead of two. For the Elmo version. Mm, yeah. Isn't doesn't Elmo also already take in the child? Yeah, it's doesn't Elmo, yeah, Elmo oh, also uses the Elmo. child CNN, right? Yeah, it's usually yeah, it, it, because it has the CNN. It does, it does. Yeah. yeah. Does. Oh, so they just replace this. So that, that would be good. Yeah, yeah, so every word has a set of characters and these character representations are combined along with the word representation. You mean, I mean for Elmo. Yeah. So oh, so so for Elmo, they basically just replace this with Elmo. No, no, no. Oh, huh? but they don't have a function in Elmo. It's just a list. Yeah. So the so character basically. embedding and the word embedding are combined together. Yeah. That's the embedding for a word. Mm -hmm. And then you pass it through two layers of LSE. Yeah. That's Elmo. Yeah. And use the layers. Right? No, no, I mean like the Elmo version of Biden. The Biden that uses Elmo. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. That one is no. They replace this character and word embedding with that more embedding. I don't think so. I, yeah, so I, they I don't just know. Take this replace. layer away, mm. and then they just uh, sub it for Elmo. Oh, yeah. Oh, so they don't they don't keep glove at all. Uh, they don't. Oh, I think. Because I think usually, because in the Elmo paper they say. Yeah, they, they combine the both. Oh, you can you can add that to this more task. Yeah. <laughs> that's, um, that's my horrible drawing of Elmo. <laughs> I it's thought fun. someone was trolling. Yeah, there's a lot of zoom bombers around. I was thinking, you know, do we need to put a passcode on it? <laughs> I can zoom bomb myself. It's fine. Yeah, you can. You can hide. I said I was seeing uh, an ER paper, and then they did Elmo plus Bird plus 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 two other things, and then they got some. You can see what the papers with I know this is exactly my yes. objection. Like people are just trying, like, what if I replace that with this and just <laughs> putting them all together? Right? Yeah, they don't even know where the gains are coming from. No, and they have no idea. They just know they're gaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, exactly. It's yeah. a little bit silly, right? It's very silly. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's necessary in science. It's not. That's the problem. So it's not necessary in science, but because of the way that we are currently thinking about running lots of competitions and things like yeah. that. We are encouraging that. Yeah. Right? We are encouraging, like say everyone has a public scoreboard, right? You always want to be first, right? Yeah. So you're going to yeah. engineer the heck out of everything. Yeah. I think so, before before the whole COVID thing, the NLP Twitter was basically talking about this issue. Yeah. yeah. Now there's a reason to have a scoreboard, like because you might hear people faster, right? Yeah, that's a good reason not to care yeah. about the science, but just care about the engineering. Right. Yeah. But, but generally, yeah. it doesn't help us understand yeah. what the heck is going on. Yeah. yeah. I'm already confused with all these models. <laughs> yeah. You see, what I'm getting an idea is like all of these models are somehow ablation studies of a much more general model. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you have different, like you strike out a character embedding, you place it with something that's Elmo, you take out something else that becomes by that. And you take out this other thing, then it becomes a, you know, I don't know. Somebody will have to consolidate all of that information into a nice paper. It's impossible. Then there mm -hmm. will be a, I guess it will be the paper that someone presented, the IR paper. I think the young did you present that? No, he presented one paper from Sigaya, the, the reproduction reproducing. Oh no, that 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 was um, Hang Chan's paper on uh the recommendation systems, uh, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah say so, are we getting anywhere yeah. with recommendation <laughs> yeah, systems yeah, yeah. research because I can't reproduce it. <laughs> yeah, that paper can be replicated for question answering, summarization, for oh, any yeah. <laughs> one thing that we go through. 
Yeah, I mean, we do have some tasks like uh, Salesforce has the Decathlon and all the Decathlon tasks. Yeah, and uh, I think, it, I mean, it's fine to do all these things, but then you actually have to understand what, why the things are working. I mean, you can put attention on top of attention, and then you can put attention on top of that, and then attention on top of that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so there's minute gains you might get from all these things, but so what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think like so Twitter, NLP Twitter is basically talking about this like SOTA or bus thing. So either you either you get SOTA or you don't get accepted. <laughs> so like that's the problem with the field now. Yeah, that's why I encourage all of you don't chase performance metrics. I, I think you've heard it more than enough times, but I'll say it again. Like you should be trying to focus on understanding. Like uh, I, I mean, you will still come up with reviewers to say, well, this is not state of the art, I'm not going to accept it. But then if you can provide insight to anything that you say, that's much better than saying, okay, well, you know, I, I had these like really strange model parameters and they did really well. And then you have to think about it. There are so many people doing NLP now. Of course, once in a while, somebody's going to strike it lucky and get a combination that works. That's just statistical fact, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? So, I mean, if you have bigger computers than everyone else, you can try more cases than anyone else. So statistically, you're more likely to get solar results just from the fact that you have more computation power. And it's the law, law of probability too. That's what Google is basically doing, right? With the neural architecture search. Yeah, <laughs> just that, like... that was my next rant. So you got there already, yeah. So you can optimize performance and yeah, it'll generalize because you have enough test data, but you won't understand why, which is the yeah. big problem. I mean, ultimately, you do want the best diagnosis for any type of NLP you're doing, but you actually have to understand, you, know, you want to know what to do next, right? Rather than, oh, yeah, well, that worked. I'm going to put five more layers of attention <laughs> on top of it and see what happens. Yeah. Any comments from you guys on Slack? Uh, sorry, on Zoom. I see Yi Song and, and Heng Chan are there. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, new song. I'm good. Okay. okay, I guess the song is okay. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, if you guys have anything to say, uh, please just barge in. I mean, it's hard for me to keep track of you guys as well. Uh, am I iPad is dying too. Okay. Yeah, so the, the last model we'll look at is called QANet. So this is uh, <laughs> this is no RNNs, only convolutional layers and self-attention. That sounds and familiar. If you look, if you stare <laughs> closely at the diagram, it looks very similar to the transformer diagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Only have a, uh, attention at the middle of uh, co-attention also co -attention. Yeah. so so i think this came out after the attention is all you need paper yeah. so that's, i uh, guess so saying what if we don't just do self-attention we also do convolutions on top of before the self-attention so what they're saying is yeah so their justification for doing this is that we have local structure and global structure. So convolutional layers capture the local structure and self-attention captures the global structure. Yeah. And without the LSTM, it's faster. Yeah, LSTMs are like not, not so happy anymore, right? They're sort of like sideline. Yeah, sideline yeah. because they're serial arc. So yeah, so so yeah, so the basic idea is like transformer but with convolutions. And I guess that went away with bird, so the convolutions went away with bird, so that I guess that was the end of QA models. <laughs> and it's all bird based models now. Yep. <laughs> Any comments you guys want to make? So I did a, a quick search QA net transformer 
and there are a couple of models. Uh, I guess the people did for their class project. <laughs> they're all uh, Stanford class projects um, that people have done to, to hybridize that. It's sort of an obvious thing to do, right? Wait, so what did they do? Uh, QA net XL, applying transformer XL to QA net. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, should we go back to the? To, oh, Enchan, did you want to say something? Sorry, your mic is on. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just interested about the Q and A. So it is used the one D convolution. One D convolution. Yeah, for the text encoding. Uh -huh. uh, I, I don't know, because I think it's quite interesting, because how can it possible to convolute? It, it's possible that the near or the neighbor words meaning are very different. How to how it's possible that this convolution can work for the text information? It's quite common. Huh? OK. So uh, anyone want to take on a, a reason for doing 1D combo? I think I think it's quite common, right, for 1D convolutions, because it's kind of like extracting n-grams, I guess. I think it's a trend which was started by computer vision papers, oh. which started doing 1D convolutions. So is it? Yeah. With ResNet, I think. They tried mm -hmm. one cross one and three cross three, and one cross one works better. <laughs> yeah, let, let's not refer to empirical results too much. So let's let's think about why you're doing that. So Samson uh, gave the hint that it might be doing time series information, right? Or yeah. Extracting n grams. Yeah, but it's only one. Huh? What do you mean? The three grams should work better than one gram. No, no, least. it's one d is in there. One d, one d. Uh huh. One dimension. One dimension. Oh, not, not a unique. Not, not, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you think about 1D, you're basically doing a single, uh, something like an RNN, right? Because you, you're having a single layer of many, many time mm. steps, right? But it's mm. one dimensional. I, I guess different from RNN because you're like sliding a window over the sentence. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like extracting engrams from the sentence. Mm. Yeah, so I'll paste another link. Um, yeah. Right. yeah. There it is on Slack. Right. So, I mean, one these are very common. Right. We think two of these are common because of vision. Right. We use vision. You have that, a, a patch of pixels that you want to deal with. All right, one day would have anything to do with uh, time series data. Yeah. Right? And we can think of sequences as time series. Right? Does that make sense, Henchan? Oh, okay. It's okay with me. Yeah. So it's not exactly a RNN, right? Uh, <clears throat> because RNN is sequential. But you can approximate something like it with a 1D column. Right? Because you're doing all of the the one by three convolutions, for example, all simultaneously, right? So, uh, yeah, maybe I can uh, see. Figure out how. So uh, I don't know how I can draw on this. Let's see. So apparently, self attention is faster than convolutions, according to the transformer paper. Yeah. Uh, probably it wastes less computation power to do to do uh, attention rather than uh, convolution. But Convolution's then, a bit of an expensive operation, right? But then, ironically, now all the self-attention models are bigger <coughs> than all the other models. That are... Yeah, they may be bigger <laughs> in terms of parameters, but it yeah. could be less expensive to either infer or train. Mm. Right, so you have to think about both yeah. of those operations. You know, this, the space requirements, which are model size, right? And there's the runtime requirements, which is our, you know, our running time. So we, you know, 
CS people care about both of them. Yeah. Right? Optimize for space or optimize for time or find a nice sweet spot somewhere in between. But were, were these four models very slow? Oh. Are you Facebook and Google? No. If you're NUS, yes. <laughs> uh, other questions that we want to field about pre bird models for, uh, oh, uh, Huang, do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, I, I want to ask about, uh, I mean, not model specific, but I mean, in terms of QA specific. So uh, I guess in, in, in some tests where the, the context uh, can be very large, right? Like the, the COVID data set, where the context can be the entire uh, research paper, like what will be the, the general approach to help you narrow down the context so that it can be like, you know, squat size context and you can apply some, some pre-trained models that was trained top squat. And are you going to use, I don't know, like very lightweight approach like TF-IDF to help you narrow down the context? Yeah, that's no, a good I question, think... Samson. I think that's like a common limitation of all these models. Even like the the models now, like Bert and all that, they also operate. They also encoding the entire context in at once. So if you were to give it an entire paper, it's definitely not going to fit into like the five one two token limit, right? For like for Bert large. Hmm. Yeah, so I think probably you maybe you have you have to do like ex, you have to like extract the knowledge graph out of it, or you have to use some kind of inverted index to encode the document. I see, I see. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, the link that I pasted is no good. I didn't really read through what it said there. It was just saying on squad that the context size that empirically set to 250, but they didn't say much about how you determine. Yeah, when I was looking at how the squad, like squad models and stuff, it, like even for the models now, they kind of assume you can fit everything to the memory at once. So if you can't, then I guess you can't do QA on, on that. Other questions? Okay, uh, Naomi, I think it's yeah. uh, up to you now. Yeah, you can use it. Yeah. Well, we have to start chatting already. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. <laughs> uh, this is a, what is a model. You guys are all CS people. Cable. You should be very comfortable with okay. <laughs> 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 all the devices. Yeah, it's a type C. It's a type C. But it's a power cable. Ah, it's a type C. Oh, you need to charge it. Right? Oh, you're out of power like me. <laughs> We're all out of power. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to charge? Oh, I thought you wanted to use this computer. Yeah, I, use, I want to use my own computer. Yeah, yeah, oh, please yeah, do. You I just share screen. Myself? You guys are all good, but you're not socially oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You guys are welcome to come to the far side of the room if you want. No, because my, my cable is here. So he should. Oh, okay. Yeah, our power supplies also have to have social Wait, distancing okay, if you want to be socially distanced. Uh, okay. Do I need this to project? Or no, you don't, don't need it. No. You uh, just share your no, screen. No, this is a power cable. Oh, power cable. <laughs> oh, I, 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 thought I thought you, you wanted to charge it. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you use the windows. <laughs> okay. No, but he has a type C. Oh, oh uh, really? Mom, go ahead. Do you still have something you want to say? Sorry. Your hand is still up. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, I'm just thinking about the, the 1D CNN and the 2D CNN. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure if anyone mentioned this, but 
I think in in the context of that sentence encoding, it also makes more sense to have one D C N N right because you're essentially polling across the different words in in the same sentence instead of like two D then you're polling across all the word embedding dimensions in glove and that that doesn't make any sense right yeah and, two D would be for something that has a two D representation uh, I mean. Yeah. You might use it in the case where you have multiple uh, time series data that you want to attend to. For example, let's say you have some like uh, textual data and you have audio data that's synchronized, right? And you might use a 2D com where you have uh, the time series data going in one direction and the type of media going in the other direction. Yeah. Now, but right, and, right and, now, uh, generally, we would, we, we would think about 1D com or 2D. Yeah, and and I think uh, the one D approach was like dated back to the very early approach of CNN in settings encoding, like the CNN Kim, I think he also used one D convolution. Uh, yeah, like back back to. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he may not have called it that. Uh, Yun Kim might not have called it one D conv. I don't remember his paper really. I think all of you probably read the Kim paper, right? The, Which one? The, the CNN Kim. Paper. That, that's yeah, predates all this stuff. Uh, that's uh, 2014, so six years ago already. Yeah. So it's a char CNN. Was it a char CNN? No, it's before. It's before people came up with um, character embedding. That's oh. the the basic. CNN Kim was one of the baseline models for many. Well, not many. I don't know what counts as many anymore. Um, for a few years, when NLP baselines were were done. Uh, using a, a basic CNN. I mean, before before that, it was the uh, LSTM and GRU baselines. Then after they figured out, OK, you don't need all the sequential information. You just need something that goes over all the things. And they tried CNN, right? Because that can be computed in parallel. Surprisingly, after that, they went back to LSTMs. I mean, LSTMs <laughs> are not hogwash. I mean, they're still useful, but it's, it's just it has limited power for the right. amount of time that it takes to do it, mm -hmm. right? If you need something where you want to pay more attention to recent time steps than time steps long ago, then uh, an LSTM makes a lot of sense because it has this, um, you know, exponential forgetting, right? Because it has to throw away information, yeah. right? Uh, attention just says, uh, well, I don't care. Everything is fine. Mm -hmm. And and so, so does the CNN. The CNN mm -hmm. is doing something similar to that because all the cons are doing uh, simultaneously on each part of the, the input. Yeah. Wang, any other things you want to talk about? If not, I'm going yeah, to... Uh, okay. Yeah, that's Go all ahead. for me. I'll, I'll put my hand down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that, you want to say something? Yeah. I'm kind of surprised that the conversion is less it's, uh, yeah, it's more expensive than self-attention because convolution ah. is just like Sorry. a window, right? Whereas self-attention is like to everything else. Okay, so I think we can give you an illustration of that. I'm, I'm going to try, but I'm not sure I'm going to do a good job of that. So, uh, okay, let's just say we have a bunch of states over here, right? And uh, attention is basically computing pairwise information for all of these guys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then if you think about what the CNN is doing, it's, it's doing this for every one of the time steps, right? So it's going like this, and then this, this, this. Mm -hmm. So uh, there may be some cases where it's doing redundant com computation, yes. mm -hmm. right? Whereas the attention is doing it, uh, all those calculations just once. Yeah. yeah. So is that the reason because you, you always use a lot of CNN filters, like more than a hundred, mm -hmm. and uh, you have to take Hex of length is about like 100. So, so 100 CNN uh, filter again is 100 self attention, and the self attention is just uh, one piece of token. But the uh, CNN is covered like uh, four to five, tokens. so it's a lot of more computation. Yeah, it yeah. could be that as well. Mm. But the re uh, received field for CNN is larger than self attention. Self attention is just one token. Yeah, but, just uh, one token. Yeah, and also. Uh, uh, CNN, you already have uh, a few hundreds of uh, different filters, but uh, mm -hmm. multi-head attention only, you already have eight or 16 times. Right. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, the multi-unit attention is almost like having a different frame. Yeah. Yeah. But but if you but if but if you stack up convolutions and one more layer, then it's looking at a much larger view. Yeah. So that, that's the point of having multiple layers, right? So you can yeah. get, let's say, for this this particular yellow node, right? Yeah. You can get a receptor field that's a lot larger, right? Larger, yeah. Something like this. Yeah. Yeah, actually, receptor field. Yeah. But then I guess for convolutions, you don't, you're not restricted to the in, by input length, right? No. Because you you can just do it. Whereas for some attention, you always have to set the length. Mm -hmm. So, let's say if your your maximum length is like five hundred, and your sentence is most of your let's say most of your sentences are like ten, then you are doing a lot of wasted computation. So that's a good thing to think about. Let's say you have sequences, but they vary a lot in length, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Which of these models is better for you, CNN or a uh, transformer, right? With self attention. By transform, I should just put some attention, right? So, which of these two models is better for 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 that purpose, where you have very very different input sizes, where you have like small or short, and then extremely long, like long. And then you know what you're doing with the CNN is you have basically the same filter uh, traversing all the time steps, so it doesn't really matter how long the sequence yeah. is. Right? You're just basically having one filter. That's it, right? Yeah. yeah, but for for the transformer, it basically has to calculate. Okay, for each of these uh, things, I have to calculate the bloody attention score for all these <laughs> things, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, I have to, uh, you know, go normalize all that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a, a computational problem as well. So yeah. So in this case, wouldn't there be like? A case to be made for convolutions over self-attention in like let's say when you're you're unsure about the number of tokens in your input yeah there probably is a good uh, reasoning for that so for example like Fong's question just now about like attending let's say to the whole of the paper like you can't you can't shove the whole paper into the transformer right because there's not enough space it would be difficult to, yeah. right? Uh, I think most people would agree that if you have a very long input sequence, you want some hierarchical model, mm. okay? Oh. Because this doesn't make sense to treat it as one unit of text. Right. right. That is why uh, I think that's why in this uh, computer vision domain, still they favor seeing uh, the transformer. No one will use a transformer uh, to do on pixel levels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, That'd be crazy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, you want to attend to like a, a million inputs yeah. all at one time, right? Yeah. So yeah, you that do like a million self attention. A million by a million. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the, one of the core idea of CNN is parameter sharing. So this is quite important in computer vision. Uh, so that that's why they, I think they stay up there. Because uh, for transformer, when the sequence gets longer, your parameters also gets yeah. larger. Yeah. yeah, so you can think about that. Uh, what what makes sense? I mean, if you have, I mean, when you think about inputs like our text, you know, there is usually structure in a long, long sequence of text, right? And if you have some way of analyzing that, then you could break it up into hierarchical structures that you want to run over. Like in our group, we've had cases where people are looking at posts and threads, mm -hmm. right, in arguments, and there's some structure there. Generally, for long articles, you have paragraphs, right? Scientific documents, which is our, our favorite in the group, have uh, sections with different logical reasons, right? You have a related work section, and that looks very different from the conclusion or the abstract section or the title, for that matter, right? So you could reasonably say, okay, I'm going to have a set of parameters for the related work section, and I'm going to have a set of parameters for the abstract, right? And another one for the method because we expect those pieces of text to have different information mm -hmm. we wouldn't want to like plop them all together in a single model right so if we have that type of understanding then you can invoke sort of like what they did in the dcn which is to say uh you know we we believe that different parameters are good for different things so 
if we're lazy, we'll we'll do that highway max out that way, or you know, we'll we'll explicitly put it into the model and say you know different things require different. So I guess in this case, maybe you can, if you, you use the transformer, then you will like break the break the paper into sections and encode each section. You might, so yeah. Be, I mean, the idea is that if you have a you know a single model, it should learn a specific type of text, right? If you wanted to learn sequential information, then you probably want something that pays attention to sequence, like an LSTM, is still a good model for that, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, and if you just want hierarchy, then something like, uh, you know, layers, layered pointer networks or layered CNNs make sense, mm -hmm. right? Because then you, you can get the visibility from a lower model of abstraction, right? CNNs make good sense because, like Nagarin said, it has very little parameters. And same with the LSTMs, right? LSTMs have very little parameters, mm -hmm. right? I mean, comparatively. Yeah, right. <laughs> they all are pretty overblown, <laughs> and that's why, uh, well, compared to the general perceptron, multi layer perceptron, they're a lot better. Okay, yeah, can I go ahead? Uh, so, uh, as Samson has already uh, introduced uh, some uh, very important papers, uh, uh, in come uh, in your companion, uh, I will uh, mostly focus on uh, the reasoning part uh, of reading companion, uh, which is uh, mostly about the multi-hole question answering. Uh, yeah, I will explain this concept later. Uh, so uh, before before doing that, uh, I I find a quite uh, interesting figure uh, in the Stanford course uh, CS two two four. So like. Uh, uh, so I, I want to initialize the discussion here. So um, because can, of can you the, blow that up to full screen? I can't read it at all. Oh, um, right. Let me try uh, present mode. Uh, I'm use um, yes. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Maybe inside. That's better. Yeah. Uh, you you are not supposed to read all this. Um, oh really? Okay. Yeah, because it will be. Uh, it will be. You can make it full screen. Oh, sorry. Because you will be <laughs> crossed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so, like the lecture uh, of Stanford uh, uh, said that uh, this is a lecture from the last, uh, the business size from the last lecture of CS224D. Uh, the, the, the topic is the future of NLP. So, so one of the future they think is that the, it may be the death of architecture engineering. Um, because all these complex uh, design architectures uh, will uh, cannot outperform BERT. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, for the leaderboard, all of the methods have a word BERT. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and uh, actually, you can, now you cannot see uh, traditional models like BIDAP or uh, co-attention uh, even exists in the top 10 or top 20. Uh, so, uh, like I, I'm not sure whether um, his opinion is correct. Um, yeah, because because it, it, is it have to prove that the, the architectures are worse architecture are worse architecture than Bert because Bert used more data than the other architectures. So if you only if you pre-train the other architectures with enough with a same amount of data and you then you compare them with Bert, then you can now tell which one is better. Yeah, yeah, I I, I think so. Um, I mean, but uh, I mean, in the transformer architecture, uh, actually, they, they have uh, also included many uh, mechanisms uh, which are proved useful in uh, previous uh, research, such as self attention, uh, positional encoding, and uh, state connections, something like this. Uh, so, um, yeah, and, and, and I think more importantly is that they use lots of lots of data. For pre training. So I think the uh, essence here is that uh, is, the, is the data more important than the architecture <laughs> and yeah. or the other one? I mean, okay, yeah. So, Huang, maybe you want to address that? Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, data isn't the only problem. The, the other problem is scalability. 
So I think in birds, they said that uh, the power of bird is that it's a, you are able to stack multiple layers on top of each other, right? Even for squat, you can have like that data, but there's no way you can train these uh, RNN with like 1.5 million parameters. And I think because bird uh, is able to stack that many layers, so that you're able to you know, fully capture just all the information in, in the large amount of pre-trained data. Yeah. So I guess scalability is also one of the reasons for bird success. The scalability. I mean, yeah. yeah, so you can yeah, add more layers, very similar to, to approaches in um, computer visions, right? Where models become more powerful, you stack like layers. Yeah, thanks for that, Hong. Uh, I, I definitely agree with you um, that there are lots of different uh, things that you need to tune for, and it's hard to make things comparable. Even with the same training data, uh, it's, it's really tricky because there are too many moving parts. Yeah, but uh, let, let's just take uh, Liang Ming's uh, uh, postulate into account and, and, and see where this goes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, that's back to the talk. So, uh, I, I, uh, I, uh, so I didn't make my slides for myself. I just, uh, uh, because uh, I, I, I wanted to introduce three papers. Uh, uh, and uh, I think they already made good slides for that. So, yeah, so I by all means, use other people's slides. Yeah, yeah. so I do I re reuse them. Yes. I'll tell Mohit you use this slide. Be happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, so uh, I will talk about the multi-hope QA. So uh, yeah, uh, as you can see uh, in this figure, uh, this is a single hope QA. As uh, I, I mean, uh, this uh, does not involve uh, much reasonings inside. Uh, you can uh, so the uh, um, if you want to get the answer, uh, most of the time you can just do the three matchings to to match the question and the similarity between the question and context. And you can locate the relevant context and then find the answer. And uh, uh, so that's why uh, most of the architectures I introduced before uh, uh, pay very much attention on the uh, cr cross attention between question and context because this is uh, essentially to to match these two information sources. And uh, uh, in this case, you can address most of the uh, single hope question answering problems. Um, but uh, things are quite uh, things went quite differently when you think about the uh, think about the multi hop QA. Uh, so the multi hop QA actually uh, you uh, in this case you need to combine uh, different pieces of information together and do some reasonings uh, on uh, different contexts. Uh, for example, I uh, in this slide uh, it shows some uh, typical types of uh, reasoning uh, in multi hop QA. Uh, for example, uh, here shows uh, one. Uh, one reason type called bridge type. Uh, as you can see, uh, the question is, uh, what was the father of uh, class five to make sure uh, uh, voted uh, to be by uh, this uh, organization? Uh, so uh, in order to answer this question, you first you need to first, uh, in the first context, you need to know who is the father uh, of this guy. And then in the, in the second context, uh, it shows this guy actually awarded uh, with the uh, uh, world's best goalkeeper. And you must uh, combine these two information together. Uh, actually, uh, this Peter to Michelle actually acted as a bridge entity uh, uh, to link this, uh, uh, to link these two entities appears in the question. Uh, this is one kind of the uh, reasoning type. And the second one uh, very common is a comparison, uh, like this question. Uh, um, that these two contexts uh, actually refer to two, two different persons. Uh, uh, they are both come from America. And the question is, uh, are these two persons from the same country? So in this case, you also need to combine different pieces of uh, information and do the reasoning. Uh, and uh, and, second, and there are, uh, so in, in this kind of uh, multi-hope reasoning task, uh, so it is, uh, this may not be addressed by a simple uh, stream machine. Uh, between the question and the context. Uh, so actually, this is uh, now uh, the com reading comprehension uh, field is uh, uh, most of the people are doing. Uh, so I want to 
first I want to introduce this paper I find is quite interesting. Uh, it is says self-assembling neural module networks. So actually uh, I will first introduce an essential idea. So the essential idea is uh, it wants a modular network which can dynamically contract it according to different kinds of reason types. <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, actually uh, the, the idea is that uh, for different questions, for, uh, it will compose different type, different uh, architect, different new network architectures. Uh, so uh, and the, uh, so they have uh, they have defined some uh, basic modules, and each module is only designed for address a, a simple. Oh, sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'll get to that. And the basic idea is they define some uh, basic modules, and each module is only responsible for one specific type of reasoning. Uh, for example, a comparison module and a, a lo 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 uh, locating module or a describing module, something like this. Uh, and then uh, when, when you have a complex question, it is actually composed of these, uh, these basic modules in a specific way. So. Uh, they will uh, they first uh, understand how this complex question is composed, and then uh, based on the reasoning types, they just uh, uh, compose these uh, blocks together to form a, a question specific uh, neural network architecture. So uh, does that mean they have a, they first have a classifier to select? The, yes. Uh, yeah, I will show the details later. This so, should be name transform, not. <laughs> Uh, yeah, first I hope you understand the uh, basic idea. So I will, then I will uh, introduce how they how they did it. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, actually this is uh, this idea is initially proposed by uh, uh, someone in uh, UC Berkeley. Uh, it is uh, initially uh, designed to address the VQA problem. Um, uh, so uh, like for example, like in in this uh, in this example. Uh, uh, like this question is quite complex, but it, it is actually can be decomposed into several basic components. For example, first find this and then find this and then relocate and then filter and then compare. Yeah, so uh, they, they can first parse this question into this kind of uh, uh, expandable uh, reasoning chains. And then uh, each, uh, each part is a module which uh, corresponds to a simple neural network. And then they contain this uh, your networks together. <clears throat> mm. So I, 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 find it, I, I find this idea quite interesting for addressing the uh, reasoning problems in QA. Uh, so uh, basically in this paper, they just apply, apply this neural module network into the uh, reading comprehension to address the multiple reasoning QA. Okay, uh, so they have the, so, so there will have two uh, basic components. First is a controller RN. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can uh, you can you can know this uh, these details. And so, but the basic idea is this controller RN is responsible for uh, the, uh, selecting uh, what is the next module. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, and then uh, another part is the reasoning modules they define. They define four kinds of basic uh, modules. First is a find. Uh, uh, this this just takes uh, uh, yeah this takes no no input. But uh, the the, uh, the output of this module is a attention distribution, uh, which will specify uh, the object the location of the object that you want to find. <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, relocate is to shift the attention to another place, um, and the compare is uh, taken two attention distributions and and output a. A uh, sigmoid uh, distribution to indicate whether they are same or not same. Um, yeah, and the fourth line is just a placeholder, uh, which is no operation. <laughs> yeah. So these are kind of like n engineer modules. Right? Yes, and this the uh, yeah, these are n uh, n engineer, and they uh, you can see that uh, for each module, uh, it, it is uh, represented by a very simple neural network. For example, the first one is a simple file. By attention and the uh, and the compare one is just the uh, MLP and the uh, sigmoid. <clears throat> so so for relocate, how how does it know where to go? Uh, yeah, this is uh, like jointly jointly trained. Yeah, 
jointly trained end to end. When, when, when you compose these modules together and then you have a signal at the top and then you propagate the arrows uh, all the way back uh, to, to train these modules. Yeah. Okay, uh, here it has, uh, it actually has a quite uh, intuitive uh, picture. Oh, oh, I, I'm interested. This is not quite. Uh, not Make it quite clear. Yeah, maybe I can find it. So you guys cannot see it clearly. Um, those of you on uh, Zoom probably can see it better. And on the projector, the projector is pretty, pretty yeah, bad in terms a, of. Uh, yeah, I'm quite familiar with WPS. It was my my office already. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's uh, more or less better than the first one. <laughs> maybe you can see the um, uh, screen on your own computer, maybe it's uh, more clear. Um, so, like, uh, at the top is the controller, RN controller, and the, uh, and the ones on the bottom are the modules. Uh, so first, they uh, first first the controller will select uh, what, what um, you can see that it just uh, predicts the distribution over uh, these four kinds of uh, uh, four kinds of modules, and you find the most relevant modules. For example, here you find that uh, we should first operate on uh, a find module, and then after that uh, you will uh, get a find module. Uh, and uh, run it to to find a specific entity. For example, here you find uh, American, uh, and then they will uh, just uh, save the uh, this uh, attention distribution into a stack. Uh, this is the stack that you know uh, in your algorithm. Uh, yeah, the uh, the first in last out the uh, stack. <laughs> Why do we use this stack? Because they will use this attention distribution as the input of the next module later. Mm. It's um, like reverse Polish notation calculation. Mm. Right, so you have two fine operations. They, they give you the arguments for the compare operator. Yes, oh, okay, yes. so you compare them one by one. Yeah, right. so you push all the arguments on the stack and right. then the operator pops them off. Is it a similar something. idea to like the OS, like OS uh, stack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, that's stacks the, that's are that's basically the same wherever you go, right? It's just like you, you're saving some context that you're going to use later, but you, you're putting them in, into uh, what is it? Last in, first out, right? Uh, order, like. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, like uh, then the next one maybe uh, yeah yeah it will first also first go to a uh, controller and find the next module is also a fine. And then you will uh, run the find and uh, get another attention distribution and also push it into the stack. And the final one, you find the uh, RM controller find that uh, for this one, it should be a com compare. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in this case, it just pops out the two attention distributions in the stack and use it as arguments for the compare module and then runs, uh, runs out the results. Um, yeah, it's kind of like Wait, it. But then then what, what is this? So this is the Ed Wood and... Uh, these are, uh, uh, yeah, these so kind of details. Ed Wood and nationality are the same? The nice. same. Uh, fine. They're going to the same fine. That's uh, They're going to the same fine. Like the two green arrows are going uh, to Ah, yes. Uh, this is like, uh, yeah, the, uh, the yellow parts are the... Uh, yeah, I will explain this to you. Uh, so, uh, when the when R, when the RN controller uh, uh, for the RN controller you compute the distribution uh, of which uh, operation should be uh, should be done, uh, it will first run the attention over the questions. Uh, these yellow parts are the uh, attention parts, uh, and based on this attention, it will uh, go to uh, softmax softmax uh, classifier and then find the uh, uh, what is the next uh, module. Uh, and then they will also use this attention to calculate the context vector, uh, uh, which is the uh, hidden state of the RM controller. I think this is the basic idea. Yeah. Uh, 
to yeah so at you can see that in the first step uh, uh, the ion controller focused on these two words the score and the nationality and the second uh, uh, the second step you focus on the add wood and the nationality mm -hmm. and the second uh, and the third part you will uh, in the third step you focus on the same I think it quite makes uh, quite makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. uh, at least for this example <coughs> okay and uh, actually they have uh, when, when they use this kind of uh, neural mode networks their performance is uh, significantly better than the bad off that's right, that's right. Uh, also, no, no. Wait, so, so the, the attention that is pushed is the attention over the whole context, right? It's not just the attention on this sentence. Uh, right. uh, is it the, so this attention is the attention over the whole yeah. context? Uh, right, yeah, the, oh. the whole context, yes. Then, uh, yeah, when, when they uh, execute the modules, uh, uh, each module will, because the output of the module is mm -hmm. the uh, attention distribution over the whole context. Yeah, which is so. Uh, yeah. Also, oh, it's just so. This is just saying that the the American the the attention on American is the highest. Yes. And then yes. there's maybe like slightly less attention on this. Ah, uh, yeah, Sentence, yeah. but yes. then more than the rest of the context. Yes, right, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, they only show one sentence here, yeah. but but actually they attend over the whole context. Okay. So it's everyone on on the on the zoom clear about how it's working is it clear which one is uh, happening at what time and i don't hear any objections so i guess we can go on okay okay uh, this is basically the essential idea of the first paper uh, and uh, I will just give these uh, results. <laughs> of course, they are the best. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, more importantly is that uh, uh, in this way, they have some kind of visualizations. As you can see here, uh, you can see that the, in the step one, they, they focus on the uh, close, uh, the close part of this sentence. And then in the next step, you focus on the whole parts. Yeah. Uh, and in this way, you can actually gain some intuitions about how the new network works uh, rather than adjust the black box and then. Wait, so this is, so the first step is focusing on loss and nationality. The second step is only focusing on add wood. Yeah, add wood and also some parts on the nationality. Yeah. Yeah. Then what about the Scott Erickson? There's no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Isn't the first one? No, no. Kind of. Oh, it doesn't oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's, wait, yeah. no, but the first one is, on N, right? This is uh, a little bit. So maybe they can mm. show a better uh, example. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I didn't catch it. You guys were looking at the, the boxes here. So for the first step and the second step, and then for the third step, is that right? Yeah. So this is the comparison operator down here. Yeah, the last step is comparison. First and, and the third and second are fine. Yeah. So, so I the think question we, was why why in, in particular this one doesn't seem to be all black. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. We assume that we should be here in the scope. Yeah. So it, it seems to be focusing more on was and and, and nationality mm -hmm. when it's doing the find. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh and uh, uh and they did an other analysis that uh you find that for the breed type of uh reasoning uh, the RN components can get it right in 99 percent accuracy oh. uh, yeah uh, and for the comparison it has actually has some problems uh, actually for comparison uh, you should be fine fine and compare but uh, uh, most of the in most of cases uh, the model will interpret it as a uh, find relocate and compare I think this is wrong. So yeah. what does relocate mean? In uh, relocate means that you shift the attention from here to another place. Oh. Um, yeah. Oh. So, so the find difference is that, you know, the find find uh, pushes on the stack. Mm. You're saving two entities, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And oh. then you do the comparison. So relocate pops then push. Yeah, pop, pop and push. Yeah. Oh. Pop again, uh, first the pops, get another attention to and then push. So in this case, 
the compare is expecting two attentions, but if it only finds one, then what happens? Yeah, I think they have a, a placeholder. Uh, oh, I uh, yeah. know. So yeah, it yeah, just no. compares with nothing. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is actually <laughs> uh, no right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what they find in next is that, uh, like, uh, when. Uh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It's not, is that uh, actually when you uh, change the encoder to BERT, it can get this right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, as you can see here, uh, uh, when you use a BERT, you can. Uh, get the fine fine and compare right uh, in a very high frequency. Okay. Uh, yeah. we, we still have the handcrafted uh, modules, right? Yeah. What, what do we use both for? For the embedding? Yeah, just for embedding. So, oh, so just for encoders. What was being used? Glove? Uh, yeah, what? Glove, I think. Glove uh, SM, I think. Yeah. yeah. It just <laughs> changed the pattern encoder and the uh, pattern encoder into BERT. What was it previously? Previously, is LSTM uh, class cloud. Okay. So yeah. that, that <laughs> because <laughs> there's the, the, the multi sense and the contextual uh, sensitivity that Bert has that LSTM yeah. is not doing. Mm, yeah. Right. So yeah. Wait, so they don't use an RNA. So the wait. So is the so the controller is still an RNA. Right? Controller is RNA. Yes. So where does the word? Very is for the passive encoder. Yeah. So it's just for yeah. embeddings. Yeah, for the embeddings of, for of, of the, this uh, and representation. this. Representation. Yeah, because the, these these are actually represented as a, a, a set of uh, embeddings. Oh, and okay. set of also, instead of passing the glove to the yeah. controller, they pass. The yeah, yeah. Device. They this is kind of like they uh they have some uh, prior knowledge about the mm -hmm. language. Yeah, when they change the uh, uh, stem to work. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Yi Song, Heng Chan? Or I'm, any I'm good, no question. Good, okay. Heng Chan, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay with it. All right. Do you think uh, this module should be enough for like, for covering any kind of question? I don't think so. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I yeah, mean, no, but, you can look at a lot of things that like in uh, what Wei Xin and Wen Chang are doing, like they're trying to write SQL queries given a natural language string, mm -hmm. right? And so there's mm -hmm. some aggregation operators that are common in SQL, like what's the maximum, uh, the largest land mass or what's the average number of senators or something like that. So then you need a, uh, uh, Types of those types of yeah. operations. So you can think of like things that you could do in databases, like those are the types of questions that you could do there. Yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah. I, I think this. Uh, I think this work is uh, good that because they uh, provide another way to think about this problem. But uh, uh, what they actually did is uh, still quite uh, simple because they actually uh, only covers these two types of reasoning patterns. Uh, uh, and the, the longest uh, uh, reasoning holes are three holes. So uh, it, not, it, it actually does not cover all the cases of the complex questions. Um, uh, so maybe uh, the next uh, question is uh, whether this architecture can be extended to some uh, more complex questions uh, to really address the multiple reasoning problem. <laughs> Yeah, a long time ago, somebody told me, um, I don't know what it's an urban legend or not, that for a PhD final exam, uh, a thesis defense in physics, a professor asked, why is the sky blue? And then, uh, you know, actually you can understand it in so many different levels. So yeah. if you can like do multi-hop reasoning, <laughs> you can go all the way back to like the fundamental laws of physics to answer that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, then uh, the next one is also related to this. Uh, this is about the, uh, the robustness of uh, multiple reasoning. So, uh, like, uh, you may have a question because uh, uh, the neural network is just a black box. So even if it can do this kind of multiple reasoning quite well, uh, you can uh, not be 100% that it is doing in, uh, in the way that you want, want it to do. Yeah, but like, uh, like for example here, uh, it's also this example. Uh, 
So you may assume that the model will uh, first find the sum of this guy uh, and get the Peter uh, signature and then find the, uh, if uh, he is voted as the word back score keeper. This is the uh, reasoning, uh, this is a reasoning chain of human and you expect it, uh, the model also do this kind of thing. But uh, actually, because it is a black box, you cannot be sure whether the model actually did what, what you want. Uh, so maybe, uh, so this paper actually proposed a, a, a concept of reasoning shortcut. So the model may not do, do, do this kind of reasoning chain. It, it may just also uh, still do some uh, problem matching uh, to, to, to directly find the answer. Uh, so I will show an example here. So it's like, uh, so the context, uh, so this is a question and this is a context. Uh, so uh, this is like, uh, maybe the model can just see that uh, in this context, uh, it, uh, the vote it appears and the IFFHS also appears and the in 1992 also appears. So this context is actually very similar to a question, right? Uh, so uh, maybe uh, you can directly do a, like some kind of matching between this question and this context. And directly get a, uh, directly get this correct answer. Uh, worst best goalkeeper. So this is also possible. So, so, so it's just finding it a template. To, yeah, it's like uh, also do some kind of a matching based uh, right. method to, to directly get an answer rather than do the multi multiple reasoning that you want want you to do. I see. <laughs> so I think this kind of is quite interesting. Uh, so it just ignores the front part. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's not the front part. Just to match these keywords, for example, the vote and the FF actually is 1992 as a match this. Yeah. Did, did they include it as a baseline in the earlier papers? Uh, earlier papers, you mean the previous one? Yeah, the multi. Uh, no, no, in the previous one, they, they didn't investigate it. <laughs> yeah, so there's similar problems like in, say, web search, where you're trying to do like find questions that couldn't be answered before, and then they want to develop question answering systems that can answer them. But then somebody goes and finds the answer to that question and puts it on a web document, right? And then all of a sudden it can be solved without any type of reasoning because mm -hmm. that question is on the web. Yeah. Right? And the answer to it is on the document. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, this is sort of a, a little bit similar that somebody can construct the knowledge base that already does the bridging for you. And so you only have to find that yeah. particular yeah document that illustrates yeah. that bridge and you can infer from that. Yeah, so I think this paper actually proposed a very fundamental problem in multiple reasoning. Uh, so uh, like, uh, so what they argue is that, uh, 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 so if the model wants to, to, to do this kind of reasoning shortcut, uh, it has a condition. Uh, that is, the other context actually uh, will miss some key information. For example, uh, the, the, the last two are the, also the context, but, uh, but the second one actually needs the 1992 and the third one actually needs the 1992 and the IFFHS. So in this case, if the, if the model wants to directly do the string matching, it will, uh, it, it, will, it will be very easy for the model to directly get the first context, right? Because the se second and the third are actually need some keywords. Uh, so in this case, the model can just find the uh, correct answer directly, but uh, the, what, what they argue is that if the context looks like this, then the model cannot cheat. Um, for, uh, for example, uh, because uh, in these two contexts, in both, uh, they both have the keywords, vote, IFF, HS, and the 992. They, uh, their keywords are the same, uh, but the answers are different. So if the model, if, if the model do the uh, shortcut, then you will uh, get we will find that these two contexts actually look the same for the model. So, uh, so in this case, the model cannot shift. The model must do the uh, multiple reasoning uh, that you expect it to do. So how did they construct these documents? Yeah, they, the, the construction method is very simple, so, I, so it, it didn't listen here. Just do some uh, entity swap or something like this. Yeah. Uh, but I find that this uh, idea is quite interesting. So. Then it's almost the same idea as the adversarial Q. There was a Stanford paper on adversarial MRC. I think it was probably the very first one. So they also did something like this. So you just swap the entities. 
<laughs> yeah, so most of the adversarial things are pretty simple, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I think this one actually specifically uh, target this problem of yes. the uh, vision show card. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, their main results are also quite interesting though. Uh, like, uh, this is like, uh, yeah, when they train the when they train the model in the regular data set uh, and evaluate it on a regular data set, you get a very high performance, as you can see, uh, this is uh, uh, as expected. As uh, but when you train on regular data set, but you evaluate on adversary uh, examples, the performance actually drops a lot, a lot. Uh, so in this case, you can show that the model actually, um, like, uh, uh, actually, uh, learn some uh, using short cards rather than do the uh, do the multiple reasoning. Uh, yeah, Be because uh, if if the model actually did the uh, multiple reasoning, uh, this result should be also high, right? Yeah, you it, it, it should not be affected by the other examples. But uh, you can see the results here. Actually, the performance drops a lot. So actually, the model. Uh, Indeed, perform some uh, using short part. So then they injected some adversarial examples, and then the yeah. system no longer relies on the shortcut, right? It does yeah. multi hop. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this is another observation. Yeah, when, when you add this kind of uh, adversarial examples to train the model, actually, the model will uh, be forced to do the multiple reasoning <laughs> rather than shortcut. Mm -hmm. I think this is the most uh, important observation for the paper. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good analysis question. Like, think about why, what you'd like to be able to show, right? I mean, if you look at it from an offering viewpoint, um, why why would you want to write that discussion question, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, about this paper, uh, any questions? I think that's all for this for this paper. Anyone on? On Zoom, there's a discussion. No question. Good. No question. All right, it's uh three ten already. We started a little late, so we'll go a little longer. Um, so uh, if you need to go, please go ahead. Uh, don't wait for us to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last one. I it's very simple. I think maybe only take uh, uh, about ten minutes. Uh, so. This one is a really new uh, paper uh, released uh, a few months ago. Uh, it actually uh, it actually focus on uh, how we how can we evaluate the machine reading comprehension. Uh, so I think it is also quite interesting. Uh, so like uh, first uh, as uh, as you can see in the uh, in this rank list, uh, actually many models has already outperformed human human level. So it is actually mean that the model actually learns how to read. Uh, so this is another fundamental question for, for the uh, reading comprehension. Um, so um, yeah, but perhaps the media thinks that it is, uh, it is true, but actually uh, for our experts, uh, we think that it's uh, far away from real comprehension uh, because you, you will simply get uh, very simple questions wrong <laughs> like, uh, like this. <laughs> So uh, perhaps the uh, perhaps uh, the problem actually is our evaluation metrics. Uh, so we should improve the current evaluation metrics to reflect the real ability of uh, of the machines to comprehend uh, text. <coughs> uh, so this paper is actually proposed a, a new test uh, testing method. Uh, it, uh, the basic idea is. Um, it's, uh, in, uh, it just combines um, different kinds of a different aspects in reading comprehension. Uh, so to form a comprehensive uh, testing rather than uh, just a test of what, uh, in, uh, for, for one single property. Uh, so yeah, I would directly start from here. Yeah. So uh, let's first look at the current uh, evaluation metrics. So uh, actually different data sets actually focus on different aspects in reading comprehension. For example, the score data set. Score data set uh, only focus on the uh, 
uh, uh, because squad only have a, a simple uh, factual questions, uh, which uh, usually do not have uh, any reasoning. Uh, so it actually uh, focus on uh, some kind of uh, uh, sentence level linguistic structure. Um, and, uh, uh, and another data set draw, uh, actually uh, focus specifically on the multiple reasoning part. Um, yeah, like this. And also, uh, actually the drop, drop focuses more on uh, counting. Yeah, counting, counting. Yeah, yeah. Counting. Yeah. Yeah. counting. counting. Yeah. Number numerical reasoning. Okay. Yeah, numerical reasoning. Mm. And uh, um, other data set may focus on some, uh, for example, this whole structure. Uh, for example, uh, and the other data sets, for example, this, uh, this core graph, uh, may focus on the coreference resolution. Uh, so, mm, so the basic idea is each of these actually only focus on one aspect in reading comprehension. So how about we combine these together to test the model? Uh, uh, maybe this can reflect the real ability of, uh, of a machine to comprehend. So basically like blue for Q. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> a blue for Q. Yeah, this is what recently proposed. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, this are uh, just another focus. For example, these poems are uh, focused on reasoning over paragraph effects in situations. <laughs> yeah. And other, uh, and other aspects, uh, despite they do not have a specific data set, uh, 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 other aspects that we can think of, for example, time, uh, to evaluate the time temporal ordering of events. Oh, and my also, favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also some groundings, for example, common sense. Yeah. Uh, like that, something like this. Mm. Yeah, and uh, there are many, many, many more that you can uh, think of. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Let's take a second and think about um, which of those things are actually very hard to do, and which of them are easy, and which of those are things that you think uh, people can do well that. Uh, machines can't do or the other way around you go back to your list of like um, all, all the things okay you saw you want to say something go ahead yeah well i think i want to answer the question asked by prof ming uh, okay. i think the implication should be the most uh, difficult one because uh uh so so now we are doing some sim simplification on on this course on the pdtb uh, corpus we found that uh, machine can do very well on um, on those general patterns, but when they are dealing with the idioms, dealing with the uh, something with implications, they have a really hard time, and I strongly suspect their ability to to do so. Yeah. Okay, so I think, I think it's yeah, yeah like um, pragmatics and factuality, those are difficult. I think some of these are uh, like common sense is pretty difficult. People yeah. have been trying common sense for many years and not getting very far. Uh, you can think about ones where if you have enough data of a certain sort, uh, you would be able to do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you go back to that uh, list at the end, right, yes. uh, where it has nexus and all these other things. I mean, many times we want to think about like what, what type of uh, pieces of information you would need to engineer data sets for this. Right, like negation and quantifier scoping, I think that's fairly easy. Distribution of quantifier is also not so hard. Um, preposition senses, I think there are lots of people doing that already, and same with non, non, non compounds. I think uh, like uh, Heng Chan and uh, Lu Yangling has been talking with myself and Ed Hobie, you know, like pragmatics, really difficult yeah, because, yeah. Uh, you know, that's very contextual and situational um, and that's really difficult. Anything where there's uh, some type of coordination between text and vision, for example, common sense and understanding, that's also hard. Um, verbs, like I told you over lunch, I think are hard, but uh, not, not necessarily because uh, of anything. It's mostly, I think, corpus problems that we don't have good ways of annotating that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, basically this kind of evaluation I want to say is that uh, uh, the, the, the real meaning of uh, machine reading comprehension is that uh, when you ask the, any kind of questions, the machine can get it right. In this case, you can say 
the machine really understand the context. Uh, yeah. Um, and the, in other cases, like, like now, uh, we can only train the model uh, to, uh, to let the machine to do quite well in a specific aspect in reading comprehension. <clears throat> so that is what they propose, an open reading benchmark. This is quite like a, a clue in, uh, yeah. Yeah, in, in reading comprehension. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then if you are interested, you can directly look at the papers. They have introduced several kinds of uh, different aspects into this, uh, into this uh, evaluation. Wait, yeah, so what's the difference between that and MRQA? I thought MRQA was basically something like this. MRQA? MRQA. That's their workshop. Right? The, their workshop. Oh, yeah, the name a, of their workshop. I think there's a data set. It's, Is there a data set yeah, called MRQA? I think so. It's why it sounds so familiar. There was a data set. There was a, there was like a benchmark task that's basically all the different QA. Oh, uh, really? Oh, I, I, I didn't know that. Um, yeah. yeah, if you can find it, you might share it with us. Mm. Yeah, basically that's all. Uh, yeah. If you are interested in, uh, in machine reading comprehension, you may, uh, for, uh, you may look at this uh, MR QA workshop. Uh, they are, uh, this workshop is held uh, annually, and we will invite some uh, famous people to do some talks. And uh, these talks are all uh, state of art directions in uh, machine reading comprehension. And uh, these two slides that I uh, presented are also from this workshop. <clears throat> yeah, that's all. Thank you. Great. Uh, any questions from those of you left <laughs> left on uh, Zoom? Oh, I think it's is the MRQA shared task. That's the one. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that is a shared task organized by this workshop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so how is that? How is the odd one different from this? Because because maybe the MRQA shared task is just one of the components. This is sort of like the decathlon, right? Uh, it's like putting all of them like together. Yeah, mm. yeah. So yeah. the MRQA one is like squat news QA trivia. Hot pot search and natural questions. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe there are a couple different ways to do it. And yeah. Oh, and they have like drop and race and a few others. Not only are model architectures an ensemble, but now our even boards <laughs> are an ensemble too. Yeah. It's quite interesting because they only allow you to train on like these, like squat and news QA. But then they make you test on drop and race. So these are like the harder yeah, yeah, yeah. data sets. Yeah, because want to have a general understanding rather than a specific. OK, let's thank our speakers for today. Well, next week, what do we have next week? Next week is machine, machine translation. Oh. Ooh, that's a big topic. You guys have a lot ahead of you. Are you doing so that? please yeah. <laughs> uh, just pick a couple papers. Don't do everything. Uh, Obviously, you need a transformer paper. Uh, same thing, <laughs> you're also on that. Uh, Shashank is on that. Uh, so those are all the presenters. And I can see uh, Saravanan is uh, may, hopefully will be the scribe. And we have uh, uh, Avana, who's the other scribe. So we get some reinforcements from um, uh, Zuya, and maybe he can help you scratch as well. Because I don't think, I don't know where Saravana will be able to do it. We'll see. OK, thanks, everyone. Uh, see you guys later on those on remote. You had a good lunch. Wash your hands, OK? All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.